Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm going to show you how to shade with Copic colors, but make it look like it's a light object. I've had a few people ask me how you do that, how you keep it from getting overwhelmed with color and getting dark. So if you want your hippos here from this MFT set to be light looking hippos, how do you do that without your color getting overwhelming? Well, if you were to use my normal technique, which is to put down your light color first, then your dark, your medium, and work your way back to light, you're going to be putting multiple coats of that light color down. And if you want to keep the color really light, then start with your darkest. There are some people that start with their darkest all the time, and that's perfectly fine. That's just another way to approach it. But for me, I normally like to just get that paper primed for all that blending. But if you choose your colors well, then you can actually do this without having to do that undercoat. So my second color is a BV00, and then I'm gonna jump to a quadruple zero. It's a very, very light, light color. And I'm gonna fill in the whole thing, but mostly focusing on the area around the edge to blend. And I'm not gonna let any of that go without any color, so each one of the hippos will have color everywhere on him but I'm going to focus the attention and the effort around the outside edges because that BV0000 will blend that color in, but if I put multiple coats of that BV0000 onto this little hippo, he's going to get darker and darker and darker and darker. But you want to retain some of that difference in color. You want to have a color that's going to be dark enough to be a shadow color. That's one of the, the problems, is trying to figure out how to retain that look of dimension even though you're using very light colors because it's, it's just really hard sometimes to, to retain that going from a very dark into a very light, especially when you're struggling with your blending in the first place. So just know you can use some really light colors in order to achieve that blending. So I'm running around each one of my animals and I'm putting my shadows in the very darkest areas with this BV11. And then I'll jump over to the 00 to give it a little bit more before I start my blending. And the hippos are coming out nice and light. I was very pleased with this color combination. And especially for hippos, because they're normally gray, it's fun to make them a little something different. With the BV00 seemed to be an easier purple to do. I did try this earlier with some V colors. I wanted to see if I could make true purples. And the V collection, if you have ever tried it, it's hard to do a lot of blending with those. I don't end up using them a lot in terms of a major element on a card because they're hard to do. It's a very challenging set of colors they have in that one. So finishing up these. Now to do the stamping on this, by the way, I'll just kind of talk you through it while we watch the coloring. I stamped the birds first because they were in the front, the birds and the cake, and then I masked them out and stamped the little hippo that's sitting down on the left and the one that's walking on the right, and then I masked them out, and well, I did the cake while I did the birdies, and then I did the hippos in the back. The hippo that's holding the balloons, I just stamped the balloons right in front of that hippo's hand. And then I drew on the little line that's kind of tied around his hand and a little bow. So if you miss in your stamping, because that's what I did, it didn't really <laughs> land where I wanted it to be, then make it look like you intended that. So for my other colors, in order to make that purple look lighter, I wanted some intensity on something else. So I picked red for one of my accent colors and yellow for the other because, you know, me and yellow just go together. That's just something that seems to end up on all of my cards. So I'm going to use the same trio of colors here on the balloons. And then I will add the shading to the red and the yellow once I get them uh, penned in there. Some people think that, and um, I guess some people could be right, I don't believe that you have to actually do all the shading at the same time. So you can go like do one balloon, do all the shading, do the second balloon, do all the shading, or you can do like I did and just color the base color first. And I like to color that base color first because it helps me to see where things are in relation to each other and I can see where they are in terms of the values that I'm getting on them. So I get that overall picture 
before moving on to something because you can take one element and start really getting into the shading on it and then it throws the whole card off because you've done too much shading or too intense on one thing before you got your whole scheme set. So for me I found it really helpful sometimes to just do the base colors on everything so I get an idea of where everything's going to be at. Uh, tip on shading with the yellows is I normally look at my yellows and start doing my shading on them and then I usually end up having to go back in to do, do them again. So if you have to do that, it's okay. Yellows are one of those colors that when they dry, for some reason they end up kind of mottled. So you may end up with some things that you have to fix. But you can always go over it and do it again. So I would take the, like the Y17 color and do a little bit more and then use that mid-tone color to blend them out a little bit again if needed. So don't be afraid to tackle them again if you have to. I'm going to put a little bit of shading underneath each one of these now just to give them something to stand on, a little room to stand on underneath them. That one little guy in the back, I was trying to figure out, does his shadow show up? And it technically would. It would kind of go out that direction. The, I'm picturing my light coming from the right hand side. And then I'll use a C1 marker to just soften out some of those edges and make those shadows just a little bit softer so that it sort of goes with the softness of the hippos because they're the blending came out really soft and beautiful on them. And I love this sentiment, by the way. I have a cousin who always sends me a picture on my birthday of a hippo and two birds. <laughs> That's just, he does that every single year. He's just a punster. We have lots of punsters in my family. And so this might have to be his birthday card this year because he always does that. Now I had this empty space in the center and I decided to make a little sparkles come off of my candles. And so I started with one of the yellows, I went in with a little darker yellow, just a few dots of that, and then just a couple little purple ones. And not to get too fussy about it or make it too dark, just a little tiny bit. And then came adding on the embellishing stuff, because what happened here, you'll see on the front what happened. I poked two holes in this because I needed to fix the fact that my sentiment is not centered because I trimmed my card down so the base could show. I like showing a little bit of the card base. And that mean, meant that since I couldn't cut it off the left-hand side, my sentiment ended up moving to the right because I cut off a, a good bit from the hippo on the right-hand side because his butt didn't need to be on there. So I poked two holes in it, punched two holes, and tied a bow around it. I guess technically it's not a bow, it's a knot. So a knot is easier to tie than a bow for somebody like me. So I just chopped off the ends and glued them down a little bit so that they won't move or untie while they are being shipped to my cousin for his birthday later this year. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, click that like button, share it with your friends. You can watch another video. You can go take a Copic class or meet me back here in a few days and I will have another video to share. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you another time. Have an awesome hippo happy day.